I'm like, Sick. I'm so geeked because you're giving lessons like this. I'm learning <laughs> so much right now. I'm like, oh my God, moment to capture, moment to capture. Okay, capture, brain, absorb capture. this. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to re-listen to this and watch it a bunch of times. <laughs> or maybe listen because if I watch it, I start just dissecting myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good thing now. Ah. That's a good thing too. Just constructive kinda, criticism yeah. when I can constructively criticize but when I'm self bashing I'm like that's indulging in something else mm-hmm. you know <laughs> like I might you know think to do something different with my hair mm-hmm. that's different from me saying oh what's wrong with my, my, my hair there that hair goes again oh my gosh like I heard you man <laughs> yeah nah, that's, that's, so <laughs> yeah, that's it who are your teachers and can you tell me a little bit about that my teachers, as in just life. Broadly, and, yeah, life like, teachers. You could know them personally, not know them. It could be in art. It could be in business. It could be in in religion. Who are your teachers? Personal or just like role both. models? So both, both. Yeah. Um, Who does Fresh look up to and learn from? Yo, I look up to Diddy. Amen. I look up to Jay-Z. Mm-hmm. Mainly those two people because they use their one gift to use as a vehicle to other endeavors that they wanted to do and get involved with. And, you know, they started out pretty much like how I did in the violent community, Mm. only one to make it out and made it the best journey that it can be and helped others. Like, their, their road was about creating something that gave hundreds and hundreds of people's jobs mm. and made it made it work um another guy is gary v i, I was listening to him this morning i listened to three gary v podcast moments gary this morning v, gary v will kick you in the ass yeah. and like get you up and running um a guy named ty lopez like it's like my like business coach like he's just absolutely amazing um, when it comes to business and new things and understanding that everything around us is is a, is a, is a money opportunity mm. like like someone made this like and you're not the only person to have this it's probably hundreds of people that made it and then there's somebody sitting on the beach because they said oh let's do some designs on the glass and send it out to people mm-hmm. like just just kind of recalibrating my mind to understand that yo know, the world is in your hands like just create just build new businesses like what's gonna help somebody else what's gonna build and help that's, that's it dope. can you oh no wait you're not uh, done who's it personally or um personal dubs I always looked at the dubs like that was always like a great mentor of mine. Like always. let's find his episode. Episode forty-seven. Forty-seven. For okay, we'll return to that. <laughs> yeah. Forty-three. 43. By forty-seven, I meant forty-three. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Lucy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dubs. dubs. What have you learned from him? I know um, that could be a whole book, but what's yeah, like the top um, two things you learned from him? Hustling. You know, um, I naturally had that hustle, mm-hmm. but when you see somebody really hustle, it's like, damn, what kind of my hustle? Like, he got a different type of hustle. Yeah. You know, and he was able to teach me that, you know, you can have five businesses and work on each of them as hard as you work on the other. How does he do it, though? Yo. Minus he just hustling. doesn't sleep. Yeah, but I, I yeah, wouldn't function really, like that. Yeah, he he really doesn't sleep. Like I I I barely sleep, but he barely sleeps. Like, <laughs> and uh, he was able to like he helped me with a lot of like monetary organization. Okay. Um, like about like having different accounts, different cards, tax brackets, like. Also, you can be able to live life and organize and do what you're supposed to do. And I also, a lot of my mentors is literally books. Reading. Yo, I hated reading when I was younger. But I really wish I loved it more. Mm. And that's literally probably my only regret. Is that I wish I read more younger. 
mm-hmm. you know I really wish I listened to those people like read read you know um, I never just read any like random pop book but I just because I only love like self help and business books but favorite books oh my gosh no pressure um, uh Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Mm-hmm. Um, the Entrepreneur Entrepreneurship Workbook. Um, Wholeness by Tori Roberts. Roberts. Uh, Gary V has one coming out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely get my hands on that. It's called Crushing It. Uh, Power. Think, uh, think and grow rich. No. Think and grow rich. I think I have the bootleg version, not on purpose, sitting on that sofa. Oh, what you doing? No, this is it. This is good. It is, like, it's it's, it's real... still Napoleon Hills. Not Napoleon Hills on there, then you good. It's just the me? pages have no numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't try to get the bootleg. It came to me. Think and grow rich. Amazon uh, played me. Uh, purple cow. Um, and the four dollar sandwich. Ooh, some of these I haven't heard of, so... Yeah, like $4 Sandwich, Purple Cow, like, those ones, you could read in a day. So. Or maybe two days, you know. Really, really good books. Really, really good books. Lamborghini. Lamborghini. Tell me about that. Um, it is, of course, a dream car, but not because of its hypeness now. But uh, Lamborghini himself uh, just owned a, a tractor business. You know, selling like lawnmowers and things like that. He was a very like successful entrepreneur, and he used to buy Ferraris, and the Ferraris used to always mess up around those times. Like, and he and he would like he had an interview like with Ferrari. He had a meeting with Ferrari. He he was like, "Hey, I know how to better your cars." You know, he was always about like helping others build their own businesses mm-hmm. and stuff. You know. Uh, never wanted to step on anybody else's shoes. And he said, you know, this can really help your car um, not break down or have these technical issues. And Ferrari took complete offense to it and, like, really, like, kicked him out of his office and literally told him, said, if you, if you, think, you're, if you think you know everything about cars, then make your own. And that's how Lamborghini was born. Wow. So... And he was so he took the he took the uh, the engines from like his tractors enhanced it put it in a car and then actually he got the first Lamborghini. You That's know? incredible. Yeah, so like you know it don't matter if you're trying to help somebody and they spit in your face, you go ahead and do it yourself. And I just it's always on live by. When do, do you feel like people were immediately taking you seriously out here, um, or did it take a while? How did you mm-hmm. earn that? Or, oh, what was bro. it like your first year oh, here? My first year, my first year was actually blessed. I, I I do I will take that. Um And you came out here with like five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Two fifty I would say, because two fifty had to go to rent and I was subleasing. And I was subleasing uh, uh under dubs. Okay. That's how I met dubs. But Oh interesting. Yeah. So I, you didn't know him from New York, you knew him because right. he happened to be interesting how things happen. Interesting mm-hmm. how things happen, like uh yeah, I came out here. It was it was a few of us because we all went to school in Virginia. It was Hampton. a group of us, Hampton University, Virginia. Boop, boop. Uh, originally, our original plan was to go to Atlanta, um, but that got railroaded by a friend of ours called named B Shaw, who also is an episode. Lucy will find the number. B Shaw, yes, <laughs> B Shaw, another great mentor of mine. Um, awesome. You know, he came to our rehearsals. This was around the time when Chris was starting to Chris come Brown. up. Chris Brown. Starting to come up, yeah. Chris Brown, he started. We starting to come up, and he came to one of our rehearsals in Virginia. He was like, "Hey, what's the plan? Y'all know y'all about to graduate and stuff." He was like, "Oh, we're gonna go to Atlanta because we wanted to stay safe, stay in the East Coast, so we could still be with family." And he was like, "Nah, y'all need to go to California. Y'all need to go to LA. That's where it's at. That's where all everything y'all want to do is there, you know." So if it wasn't for him saying that. We would have been in Atlanta probably right now. Um, so it was a blessing to have him around. And then as soon as as soon as soon we moved to um, L.A., he took us under his wing mm. and, like, took us to meet the right people and hang out with the right people. 
Uh, How did you connect to Hampton in the first place, actually? Um, if you don't mind me asking. With B. Shaw? Yeah, because I'm um, like, if he's on tour and he's with Chris. He was, it was like one of those small little shows where Chris Brown was performing. And we went. And uh, he liked one of one of my friends, mm-hmm. so and she was like, "You should come to one of our rehearsals." And you know, he was like, "Yeah, for sure." And then like we clicked, like meant to be. Yeah, it was just it was just right. You know, friendship blossomed for sure. That's so dope. Yeah, that's how it happened. And Virginia too. You know, that's where Chris Brown's from. So he was doing like little shows here and there, and a friend of ours. We all went, and the rest was history. Oh my god, yeah. I'm just thinking to how. Imagine if for whatever reason that night y'all didn't go or right. your friend that he like didn't show up. So many things had to happen it's and crazy. conspire yeah. for that to happen to come out here. And then it's, I'm just blown away. Um, do you have a team for your business, for your lifestyle? Mm-hmm. And what does that consist of? Um, I'm still building a team. I'm still building a team as far as like business assistants and business associates. Um, but... In my first year out here, when people wasn't really taking me seriously, mm-hmm. um, and I'm not, not gonna say they wasn't taking me seriously, but but it's just certain certain people weren't. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna mess up the train of thought just so we kill yeah. two birds with one stone here. Can you give an example of what it was like being here when you were around people who might not know who Fresh is yet, or you hadn't mm-hmm. established yourself yet, right? Like in a, a situation um, or an example of that. And what I'm trying to point at is just about all of us start pretty even kill out here right uh it, it wasn't it wasn't i don't i don't want to say they wasn't taking me seriously it was about us learning the ropes out here mm-hmm. paying the dues so to speak you know and since i've been dancing since i was a kid it was just it was one of those things where it was like yo i've been dancing for over 20 years you can't tell me to pay no damn dues mm-hmm. i've been doing this for too long like you know, but I had to understand, like, hey, man, this is a whole new environment. It's a whole new side of the coast. Um, you got to just build, you know. Don't complain. Just do something. Don't be bitter. Be better. Mm, That's it. Just don't do be what bitter. You gotta, be just, just do what you got to do. And um, so originally when we first moved out here, when I when I started going to a lot of auditions, because back then it was a lot of auditions. And, you know, and I started seeing the, the same people get hired. And I'm just like, I'm like, why is that? You know, a lot of people, a lot of people start focusing on the problem and not focusing on the solution. Mm-hmm. They just be like, they always go, no, they didn't, that's all you hear. So I'm just like, but why though? And I, I, I didn't understand until years later, like, oh, they're not, it's not about them being friends. It's just that, yeah, they are friends, but they, it's a trust there. You know, I trust that they can deliver on a job. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, if I'm going to be hiring a top-notch job with Fatima, I'm going to hire my best boys, my friends, the ones I can trust that can do my choreography. It's the same thing when I first got the call. You're not going to call somebody random that just moved out here, you know? But, you know, that's when I had to understand. But, you know, with that, it led me to build my own uh, dance conglomerate, I won't call it, um, with dancers and choreographers that's that are very talented but usually are overlooked and are very creative and things like that's how I came up with Ocean's Eleven. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, it was one goal in mind where eleven individuals are very specific at what they do and are really the best at what they do to accomplish one goal. Such a fun movie, the, the you know? trilogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how I came up with it. I was like, okay, it's perfect. Ocean's Eleven, you know. Um, and what World I was of Beast doing. was also in that. Mm-hmm. I just want to know. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot of us. This is, this is like 30 now. Yeah? Yeah, it's, it's like 11 guys, of course. Um, it's like, and then it's, we have Ocean's 12, which is all girls, and Ocean's oh. 13, which we still building, and it's the kids. That's so dope. Yeah, so I just wanted to build my own platform to know that, like, yo, we can do this. We can be creative. You know, we don't need the jobs necessarily in order to work. You know, we can do videos. We can do classes. And, you know, we just build our own crafts and, you know, work. Mm-hmm. You know, like, don't just sit around moping and being mad because you're going to get booked on that. Do something about it. So Make your own. It was about, it was about building a platform where... 
not many people don't have to move out here and have to pay the dues, or so to speak. If they if they're elite enough and get recruited in, it gives them that stamp of approval. Like I I already did the groundwork, so as soon as you put this Ocean's Eleven stamp on you, you're all set. Mm. You know, like yeah. It's pretty, I don't understand it, but yeah, pretty much. It's... How do people connect with you? Like, let's say if Lucy or Danielle are like, I'm out here, I'm doing my thing, I love his choreography, I love what the team is about. Mm-hmm. How do people connect with you in that way? Easy, just DM me. Okay. That's it. I, I'm, I'm always, I'm, <laughs> I'm not one of those people that be like, I don't answer. No, I answer. Like, a lot of people, a lot of people hit me up like all the time, like for advice or anything. And I'll always make sure I get back to them. Uh, Except for the it, the message from April yeah. 2017. The message. That the, I the famous message that she cropped into a picture that she showed me like, see, this really happened. She like wrote a message and like cropped the picture. She, you know. So much evidence. Photoshop, Photoshop. <laughs> the text Photoshop she showed me. But yeah. <laughs> I'll be like 80 years old, like, 2017! <laughs> he didn't respond. <laughs> that was the- <laughs> That'll just be the running joke forever. And so, oh, man. back yeah. into your team, because you also have a clothing line. Yeah, clothing line. Um, the oceans. The oceans. The uh, oceans. You know my name means sea wave in Hebrew? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. You learn something every day, see? Okay, I like that. Um, yeah, I have Oceans, I have uh, TFK, which is the freshest kit. It's my clothing brand. Um, still building, still in the ropes, uh, but I originally built that idea because I wanted to have some type of company that provides funding for students that's going to college. Wow. Yeah, because I knew, like, me leaving out of the hood, you know, I couldn't find any scholarships for myself. You know, and I was just like, man, you know, it was no scholarships. And I knew that the best opportunity I got in my life was to go to school out of my state. So I wasn't able to fall back into bad habits or anything like that. And, and we'll uh, talk about that next also, growing yeah, up. growing up. And uh, so I knew, I was like, man, I want to be able to provide something like that for students that's going to school outside of their state. It's just looking for a better life and things like that. So mm-hmm. I had built TFK. That's a big undertaking and to contribute to others. Yes. And we're in a field that's very self-centered. Yeah. So, yeah. wow. Um, still building a TV show. So I have like a team, a development team. Yeah. Doing a TV show. Um, I have a management company for like dealing with music and uh, artists. And uh, an entertainment company called Code Red. And we do parties and events and things like that. That's so dope. Yeah. I have it. I'm like, I have it in the email we researched. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa. That's a lot. So how do you, yeah, so who's on your team? Like, do you have someone on social media or is it that's, like- that's the worst part. Like, that's why I was like, I need a, so I need a team, like, first start building a team, 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 team. I have, like, four different teams. So... Um, I have a team, of course, for the TV projects. I need a team for TFK. I need a team for the entertainment company. I have a partner in the entertainment company, but we only do one of the events out of the four or five that we actually do um, called Cherry Pop, where we uh, give the opportunity to up, upcoming artists to perform, and we do like a small like indoor festival. That's so dope. You know, doing like any upcomers, whether it's clothing lines, food, um, a lot of giveaways and everything like that. How it's, do people find out about that? Um, Cherry Pop Events. At Cherry Pop Events. That's so cool. Right. Hey. <laughs> yeah, or uh, or underscore Code Red. That's so dope. How do you keep all of these things in movement and knowing that you're checking all the boxes? Um, that's the hardest part is being completely invested and really just setting the time. You know, if it's like, hey, this this is already set in stone and you got this running, then start dedicating your time to that and start mm-hmm. dedicating. It's just about applying your time. Time management is the key. Have you read Four Hour Work Week? No. Read it. Four Hour Work Week. A read book it. suggestion. Yes. Yes. A um, book suggestion. Tim Ferriss like Four Hour Work Week, and it talks a lot about passive income, but not in this big like. It, it really talks about um 
oh, what's automizing your business yeah. and having it all work. And um, Tim Ferriss, he speaks about even how in many ways you have to update it for yourself because it was the most recent version is like 2009, okay. but it's phenomenal. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've read oh, it the definitely. most of any book over and over. I definitely to get that down. Yeah, um, that's so cool. Okay. <laughs> so can you tell me about growing up? Growing up. So um, broad. Yeah, growing up. Um, I'm trying to make sure I can get sweet. specific. But... Uh, well, I started dancing at the age of two. My mom had me when she was 16. Mm-hmm. Um, I was at like her senior uh, show. It was not a lot of senior show. It was like a senior uh, trip where they had like an outdoor festival type thing. And Do you was, remember this? Or... I, I remember bits and pieces, literally, when I was two. It was crazy to think wow. about. I remember bits and pieces, pieces. Like, I remember colors. I remember a lot of, like, people that was there. I remember my uncle who was there. And I just remember me roaming, you know. And they tell me the story better than I can. But uh, I, I was dancing. I danced, and they're like... They had like a talent show type thing, and I danced, and my mom lost me, and my mom could not find me, whatever. But she heard all these people screaming for me and stuff, and found me there dancing, and that was like literally they gave me like first place trophy, and it wasn't like that baby <laughs> dancing. Like literally, I was getting down. Like I got footage. You do? Um, yeah, <laughs> I got footage of me. Can we ha- like? Can we? Yeah. Yeah, can we have <laughs> yeah. it? I gotta get it sent out here. Please. The baby baby ones, I gotta get it sent out here. But I do have one of my kid ones on my IG. Oh I was like, gosh. I think I was like six or seven in that show. Uh, it was on my IG. You can check that out. Uh, but ever since then, and then my my uncle kept hearing, kept seeing me notice, kept noticing me uh, dancing to Ice Cream's music. And that's a weird song to dance to. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he was like, you know, I'm gonna put him in some shows. Put me in a bunch of talent shows throughout my entire life. Um, <laughs> literally, just. It was amazing. Like, I did have so many like uh, talent shows that I did throughout going into high school. Then I had like a, a team, of course. Like it was called Exclusive. Um, had my name was called Special Effects. That was my name. That sounds so East Coast to me. Also, I don't know. Like, would they? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like West Coast. I feel like they wouldn't say like Special Effects or Exclusive. I feel like yeah. I'm like yes, it's so East Coast. Probably yeah, North so East. So East Coast. Yeah. Um, and. I grew up in Hartford, Connecticut, mm-hmm. um, and it was not a lot of role models, of course. It was a lot of violence. It was, like, the worst. We definitely are. I'm hoping we're not anymore, but mm-hmm. for years and years and years, we've always been, like, top 10 worst city in America, yeah. uh, which, is, can... which is weird because Connecticut is the richest, one of the richest cities. We're the richest states. It's like, yo, it's how do you have being... the richest state but the poorest city? doesn't add up but you know um but that's that was the that was the thing and you know a lot of people like oh it's just nothing but rich people now they're on the outskirts you must get so frustrated Um, that's what i thought and i probably said something to you and you were probably like i will never talk to her again i will not answer her text message on 2017 not at all not at all um (laughs) never never it was like no white people it was literally all just flooded with black people like I went to nothing but black schools. Like, it was no type of diversity. Um, But dancing kept me as straight as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, But still, growing up in the hood, stuff finds you. You know, a lot of of stupidity finds you. You know, you always got to be down with somebody or whatever, you know, represent, of course. Um, But because my mom was growing up the same time I was growing up, you know. Being a 16-year-old, having me, it was just crazy. My, My father wasn't around. Um, and you had a few siblings, right? Oh man, a few. Shoot, my father went on a rampage. Um, but we, we, you know, they. I had a. Fa- my father was around, but they didn't know he was my father. Yeah, that was the drama. It was like a TV show. <laughs> but found out who my real father was when I was like fourteen. Oh. Um, but he was oh. always my mom's. He was my mom's high school sweetheart. So, like, you know, they just never knew. But as soon as I, while I was growing up, they used to always be like, he acts just like Tank, you know? He acts just like Tank. And then I started to look like him. People used to be like, you need to go get his, you know, blood check or whatever. But anyways, uh, 
uh, got out of the, I never really got into no serious serious trouble um, but it was a lot of dumb stuff you know kid stuff happens and I ended up getting a, a mentor mm. you know a mentor had to like we had to join this program a lot of us had to join this program and it was like a Saturday school and we ended up it was called Saturday Academy and we ended up having to have a, a mentor and our mentor my mentor had saw the potential you know in the hood you have like those like not those hard headed kids, but it's always that one potential where you just be like, Yo, you're better than this and like I could see you going really far. Mm. And he actually paid for half of my trip to go to a college tour, you know, when I was in high school and literally I made it I made it to college literally by a hair. It was like literally the last month, two months of school. It was no way to get in college at the well, time. At that time, you know, people start getting their college acceptances like in the beginning of the year. It's already May, April, like, and uh, he took me to a college tour. Um, went to Hampton University, went to Morgan, Norfolk, a lot of like down south schools. You know, he was pretty much introducing college because in the hood, you're in, the, in Hartford is like a capsule. It like just. It's just dark. It's just there. Wow. It's just, it, it keeps, it's consuming, you know, and it's really hard to get out. You know, you don't, you're not, um, what you call it, you're not introduced to a better world or a better light to feel as if it's possible. Mm -hmm. You know, you just hear those people come back and they talk about it. You never really get to experience it. So how can we believe that? You know, and that's a, that's a lot of, that's where our, our, our divide is because people think like, oh, if you go back to the hood and you just talk to them, they'll be okay. No, you got to take these people out. They have to experience it for themselves. I can't like, you know, people be like, yo, do you go back fresh? I'm like, yeah, I tried, but you know, you're just going to, it's just going to be a waste of time, low key. You know what I'm saying? Some people would hear you. Some people will understand, but if they're not, literally talking to you every day to experience to be like yo or to live vicariously through you they're not gonna understand like yo i could i could get out of here this can actually happen mm -hmm. you know that's why you hear it so much people like yo we gotta make it out of the hood you got to do, 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 do it's just literally about believing it and and actually living it so since he was able to take me out of that and i was able to experience college and experience a different state. And you said it was really hard to get or impossible to get a scholarship. Yeah, at the, yeah. At the time, I was like, yeah, it was no scholarships. It was, it was nothing for me. He was like, yo, write, write, write your life story. Mm. You know, write what you are, write what you do, write, write everything down. So I wrote everything down. I gave it to him. He kind of put his little taste on it. Sent it to Hampton University, yeah. and that was the school that accepted me. You know, and they, they gave me a chance. And, like, literally the day the day I graduated, I, like, left and I went to college. And, and What's that? What happened. was what was that like culturally to go from if you feel like you're in a capsule? Oh, my gosh. To go to it was academia. So, so hard. It was so difficult because living, living your life one way, you know, is literally telling is literally telling you, like, yo, you cannot live like how you are living now mm -hmm. you have to completely change it's it's so hard for you to be accustomed to something and it's completely gone it's not the same way can you give an analogy for like, people that are like not processing it like because uh, that's a tough concept yeah it's so hard so growing up in the hood you always like this mm -hmm. you always yo what you looking at and so everything is so hot-headed in my brain like everything is and nobody's a punk, you know what I'm saying? Harvard, so it's like, as soon as somebody looking at you more than one second, it's like, it doesn't come off as in, hey, I don't know that person. It comes off in, since I don't know you, we got beef automatically. So we are already in the negative. Mm -hmm. So when I get to college, you don't understand that, yo, everybody's here, everybody's learning, everybody's better in this, that like, this is a better life, this is not the hood, you know? There was one guy who came up to me. He's like, yo, what's good, fam? I punched him in his face. Because fam in Hartford is fake-ass mother effer. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a that's a derogatory term. So you don't call me fake, bruh. Like, 
So and then like, but after I punch you, you completely regret like, yo, my bad. You met family, didn't you? My bad. Mm-hmm. And he said, like, yeah, man. What the what was that? <laughs> like, Aww. you know, in in like, and then you have some of the annoying preppy girls. You know, they're like, yeah, what's up? Oh my gosh, you gotta brighten someone's day with a smile. And I'm like, yo, shut up. Like, you know, and I felt bad because it took, it really took me a lot. It took me like two years. It took me like two years to, to figure out like, yo, you're a college boy fresh. <laughs> Let go of this hoodness. Like, you don't have to be hard anymore. You don't have to, this, this exterior. Like, you're good, you know. And I didn't start noticing so I would go back home and then I would, I would digest those, those, those attitudes again. I would mm-hmm. be running the streets with my bros mm-hmm. and my homies. You know what I'm saying? I'll be at school hurting because I can't make it to a funeral because I lost a friend again. You know, like a lot, like within the college, I lost like lost like 17 friends. It was, oh my god! Like 16 of them was killed. One of them was on was killed on a on a bike. You know, uh, just by dirt bike riding, and you know it's really hard to get accustomed to and like yo, I have a better life here. I need to stop going home. Did you feel guilty at all? Oh yeah, I felt I felt guilty a lot, like because I felt like I was the glue. I felt like I was the glue of 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 the entire hood, mm-hmm. and my like my family, you know. And I'm the first out of my family and the first out of my projects to ever go to school and to graduate. Damn. So it was like it was a lot on my shoulders because as soon as I left, then all my friends was getting killed and like my friends end up in jail and you know having babies and just it was just a mess so i have a question off of that now go to current times and there's a lot of dances that are emulating maybe an emulation of the hood or talking about hood things yeah and glorifying drugs and strip and like strip club and all that stuff where as far as dance is concerned that two points I want to make on that Mm -hmm. one is I hate the people that haven't experienced the hood to teach hood classes it's just like someone being a virgin and teaching sex ed classes how can you teach me something that you have never experienced like that just doesn't make sense with that said I don't understand how We are in a time where people haven't experienced industry jobs and are teaching industry classes or master classes Mm. or things like that. Like you're pretty much poisoning people's futures because you're 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 teaching false accurate like false information. It doesn't make sense. Like if somebody was like, "Yo, fresh," if I have never booked a job and you tell me to come teach a master class for people that want to move to LA or in, in like have a career, I'm gonna have to turn it down because I'm not qualified. Question, what if you're a master at popping or a master at something but you haven't worked extensively in the industry? Yeah, it's, if, but you are known to be a master. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's just like karate. You don't see somebody going to a couple karate classes and just because they have more views than the, the, the teacher, that they're able to go to another state to teach for black belts. Like, like how can you teach? How can you teach a class full of black belts when you're not even a black belt yourself? That don't make sense. And mm-hmm. like, and people allow that, you know. And people like, like just the other day, I had, I had, I had tweeted out, and I said, yo, I was like, I was like, yo, if it was up to us, teenagers would be teaching college courses. How can that? How can that? How can that possibly be? If, the, if it's not okay in the real world, it shouldn't be okay in this industry. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is a 15 year old going to teach me? Like, let's be realistic. Mm-hmm. Like, and you know, and, it, and you kind of come off wrong, but it's like, yo, at the end of the day, my resume is longer, like longer than your height. Like, bro, like you serious? You can't. You. You're not, what are you, what are you teaching? And I could bring it up one in an academic environment. You could do a case study of a 15 year old and see what you could learn from the case study, but you're not going to have the 15 year old teach the class. Exactly. And we're not talking about a particular 15 year old. Yeah. I don't know who's 15 and teaching. (laughs) Don't show me right now. (laughs) Um, So bring it back to you're in college and you have, 
how did you deal with that grief or what can you learn about what have you learned about I'm baffled about processing yeah. it all because I've I've dealt with losing maybe a handful of friends in that time mm -hmm. and I would just each time come to my own mortality and feel weird like are they haunting me right now mm -hmm. or how do I respect their memory and angry and then I felt like I remember um, I had a friend who passed he committed suicide while I was studying abroad and he was like he he grew, uh, he grew up in Harlem and like very super educated super smart super everything you know some hood life as well and he just was mentally he was unwell mm -hmm. and I I felt so disconnected from my friends and want to go back to my friends when I'm in this beautiful place in Holland mm -hmm. but I was I just felt kind of trapped and like in my own headspace um, so how did you deal with it and what did you learn about that or what can you um, how the hell do you deal with that jeez I it was time it uh, it was it was nothing in particular that I could have done yeah but to just be hurt because it's just like dang man like first of all you're a college student from the hood no scholarships you know things like that it's just like I don't even have the money to go home as many deaths as it is like I don't want to have to go back home for one and then I don't go back for the other you know so I just had to like not go at all even when I did have a break, I didn't even go home. Like I went to other people's family's houses or got my own apartment and just stayed in Virginia and just understood that one day you can go back and change things, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And just, um, but still keep in contact with as many people as I can. Did people understand that? Did uh, you get some people did, some people didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, I have friends that, I have friends that understood mentally and be like I'm so happy fresh mm -hmm. like this is it I'm so happy like they still tell me to this day like Yo, I'm so happy you made it out I'm so happy you made it out like you have those that's that was hurt that couldn't understand but was hurt and be like yo you just gonna leave us mm -hmm. why are you leaving us why are you just you, you know you're gonna leave us to fend for ourselves or you know they, Cause they called it hell. They was like, "Yo, you just gonna leave us in hell, man? Like you gonna go back?" They used to call it my school paradise. And you just gonna go back to paradise? Oh, oh, all right, you know. And then you have those that was the angry, the ones that can understand, but just was angry, upset about it. Like, oh man, that's not loyal, man. You supposed to be loyal to the hood. You just gonna leave and blah blah blah. Like that's messed up, you know. But at the end of the day, it's my life. And you and, want to stay alive I also. I want to be alive. Yeah, yeah. I want to, I want to uh, make everything right. So. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm glad that you made it you, out, right? You made it out because <laughs> that's um, looking at a bigger picture. People won't see that for you. Mm -hmm. If they do, that's great, but. That's true. Cool. Cool. So, not cool, but I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm with it. And wow, wow. If only people knew. You know, if only we were capturing stories. But if only people knew. Yeah. That's like <laughs> part of why I'm passionate about this. Actually, what each person is going through. And if you could take a snapshot of a dance class and then single out each person and get their life story. I mean, wow. And if we could connect on that level. I mean, wow. What greater art could we do? Right. Or like bigger dreams could we build? So yeah. I'm on that mission. Uh, <laughs> just, just do it. Do it. <laughs> um, so I want to go back to... I have a few more questions and then right. how did you go about your branding process and I ask it from a place of still feeling so stuck on my personal brand and sometimes like what it means to have one mm -hmm. so I understand it I've done some work but you like for as long as I've known you <laughs> have had a personal brand a brand yeah um, uh, people think just Throwing up a nice picture and throwing up a nice name, throwing up a nice logo is a brand. People have to understand that the brand is a personality. Mm -hmm. You are building a person. You know what I'm saying? You are building a person that someone has to follow and someone has to understand, not just, oh, it's cool. You know, um, you have to understand why, when, why, where, why, like how, mm -hmm. you know, all those things things that you have to understand about a brand is what what you what are you offering what is this person offering you know what is this this person you're creating 
once you understand that, it's how are you building other people? How are you create? What are you creating for other people mm. to be involved? You know. So did you come out here and you were like, "This is my brand," mm. or so, how did you figure it yours um, out? I so I knew. I knew personally I love hats. You know, personally I love hats. I know people love hats. I know people love art. So I want to kind of have like an artistic hat. You know I'm what staring saying? at the hat. I know, so cool. I know. I know that people need scholarships. I know. So that was like my vehicle. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, this is not just an ordinary hat that you think is cool. This is helping somebody go to school. Uh, bars. <laughs> bars. <laughs> bars. I've ne- bars. never said that before, but bars. But you, you know we what I'm saying? We have it recorded and everything. You know, so. if it's, it's, it's helping and it's making someone else look good. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, with Oceans, you know, it was about individuals that are going through the same thing I'm going through. I'm very talented and I could do jobs and I can create, but I don't have a platform and I, I need help. Mm-hmm. Yo, Oceans can help you with this. We we'll, we usually do a carnival and we have multiple choreographers on that. You know what I'm saying? So they'll be able to experience working with dancers and experience putting some on stage. You know what I'm saying? And then you have the performance, which is the cool part of it to for to for other people to enjoy. You know what I'm saying? It's always about why and how and what is it. And then what about for you as fresh? As fresh I have I always stamp it as stay fresh. That's how I always stamp it. How did you it. think of it? Like, like uh I it's just, so hard with it was yourself. Just, yeah, it, that's yo, know, it's so hard. I, like it's so hard to brand your personal self. Yeah. Um but it's all about everything that I'm involved with and I like stay fresh is like your stamp you want to have a stamp like a cool stamp of like oh stay fresh okay Mm -hmm. you know um I'm coming out with like a dance project called a fresh perspective you know what I'm saying because a lot of people there's a lot of a lot of videos that's just it's just class videos I'm tired of it so a fresh perspective Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying my perspective on how I want to see things and want to art- bring out artistic formats for other people to involve themselves How do we find with. it? And um, it's this it's is new, so yeah, it's new. I had just released one, um, but I personally want to start working with like individuals. Mm-hmm. You know, start doing like solo videos, but I want it to like have like a sit down with them, mm-hmm. figure out what they're going through. We find a song together. And we create like that, and then we do a video. Oh my God, I would love to do that. If yes. I could ever, how do I get onto that? Yeah, man, that'd be great. Let's yeah, do that. are you serious? I'm so serious. So down. I'm so serious because I want, I, I, I'm tired of people just throwing moves together and just being like, oh yeah, I have these, this, cool, this cool class. You know, I want people to actually, I want to build something that people are actually putting their heart into something. And create something like, yo, this means something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be just a video that, that's going to last, be cool for a week. You know? So, um, whatever they're going through, whether happy, sad, blah, 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 blah. Like, we pick a song, we'll be like, yo, the song, pers- like, it personally connects. And we can do something like that. That's so dope. Yeah. See how I asked? Didn't ask, but I asked. Because I didn't want to put pressure. I wasn't trying to utilize it. <laughs> but, no. yeah, it's just, yeah. 